Is CERN tampering with our reality? Chances are that you were brought here with a particular question, or maybe you saw my previous video about CERN. Regardless of why you're here, it's the same question that inspired my research and eventually the creation of this video. In the early 1920s, a young physicist would change the future of particle physics forever. He was unsatisfied with the particle colliders of his time, and he felt that there was a way to make particle collisions much more explosive. At the time, most particle colliders were linear. This means that they operated a lot like a bullet being shot down the barrel. In the year 1930, Ernest Lorentz would create an atom smasher that would supersede any particle collider science has ever seen. It was called the cyclotron. It consisted of a vacuum tube and state-of-the-art electrical engineering that was capable of accelerating small particles at some of the fastest speeds science has ever seen. This artifact is a precursor to the Large Hadron Collider over at CERN. But when he created this prototype, Ernest had no idea that it could one day be modified to destroy everything he ever knew. In 2009, Fiona Broom was discussing with her colleagues about her memories of Nelson Mandela dying in prison back in the 1980s. But to her surprise, her colleagues looked confused and they later informed her that Nelson Mandela was still alive. After speaking with a lot of her colleagues, Broom became even more confused because there was a large amount of them that had shared a lot of the memories she had about Nelson Mandela dying in prison a long time ago. This became known as one of the first epidemics of collective false memory that Broom later coined as the Mandela Effect in one of her blog posts. The Mandela Effect was discovered in 2009, the same year that the Large Hadron Collider launched its first beam. There have been many whispers of conspiracy regarding CERN. However, one of those comes from an established health scientist by the name of Astrid Stuckelberger. According to her, CERN has been opening interdimensional gateways that have been allowing demons to enter our reality. You just said something which made my ears prick up. They are part of CERN. Yes, because uh, actually CERN is dealing with um, radio, radionuclear research. But it is more than that because there are lots of physicians, I, ha I know some, they're doing very strange experimentation. There are beings from portals coming in and out. It's physicists from the CERN who told me this. They've testified so is, to beings coming in and out of portals. Yes. You know, they're, they're dealing with the boson of X and the um, subatomic uh, things. So they have apparently in the bottom of the stern, uh, this this portal, this door, where they are dealing with all the subatomic uh, dimensions. You have more dimensions, and uh, they are playing with that. They had a, a being. They did not tell me more. She also claims to have a military source that says that there is a fight for time inside of CERN. When you look at what is going on in the CERN, there is a fight from some of the military um, agencies, uh, Intel. They say that there is a, a fight on time. They're trying to change time. I'm, I'm just saying that because as a scientist, you cannot not say something so important. Because if you can deal with the smallest energies in on Earth, you can imagine that you can go through other uh, realms of uh, dimensions, you know, they say, yeah, so I, I, I will stop there. Could this mean that CERN is capable of affecting timelines? 
To answer this question, we will have to take a more logical approach. As you may have seen in my other video about CERN, Stephen Hawking believes that the technology behind the Large Hadron Collider at CERN could potentially end the world. So if CERN could potentially end an entire timeline, would that mean that we automatically enter a new one? Well, according to the CIA, the answer to that question is yes, we already do. The year is 1972, and the United States is in the middle of a Cold War with the Soviet Union. And the US is in hot competition with the Soviets to produce the most latest and greatest advancements in military technology. It is at this moment that US intelligence conceives of its most radical idea yet. They were going to train psychic spies. This side quest not only unveiled to us the secrets of human potential, but it also unveiled the nature of reality. The CIA found out that what we call reality is an illusion. An illusion powered by infinite awareness. You don't have to just take my word for it. Allow me to show you a document that was actually forced by law to be released from the CIA that's going viral on the internet right now. The universe is composed of interacting energy fields, some at rest and some in motion. It is, in and of itself, one gigantic hologram of unbelievable complexity. The human mind is also a hologram which attunes itself to the universal hologram by the medium of energy exchange thereby deducing meaning and achieving the state which we call consciousness. The report later goes on to explain how the energy that we perceive of within our space and time, or what you'd call time space, is actually limited within our domain of time space. But what about the energy that exists outside of this time space dimension we live in? According to the CIA, well, they have an answer for that too. Energy in infinity means energy uniformly extended without limit. It has no beginning, no end, no location. It is conscious force, the fundamental, primal power of existence without form, a state of infinite being. So basically what we call reality is just one configuration of this infinite energy that exists outside of what we call time and space. It is what brings our reality into existence. So all of that sciency nerd stuff is cool and all, but how does it really explain how CERN is tampering with our reality? Well, to answer that question, we're gonna have to dig even deeper into what a hologram even is. Here is a diagram describing how a hologram works. As you can see, there's a lot going on here, but we can make sense of it all by dividing it all into its crucial parts. Obviously, there's the object that you're trying to record, but in order to do this, you're going to need two crucial parts. First, you'll need the reference beam. This is what measures the distance from the laser doing the recording and the actual object itself. And then you will need the object beam. This is the laser beam that will actually record the object. Both the object beam and the reference beam are angled so that they reflect and shine onto what's called the recording plate. This recording plate is made out of a special material that is capable of capturing what is called the interference pattern. You could think of the interference pattern as kind of like intersecting ripples in a pond, but with light waves instead of pond water. In order to see the hologram, you have to shine the same coherent laser light through the back of the holographic plate. The hologram is created because the laser beam, energy in motion, interacts with the recorded wave patterns, or energy at rest, in order to create a convincing illusion. CERN claims that they are using the Large Hadron Collider in order to research quantum particles. But 
perhaps they have a much more secretive agenda, one that is hidden within the very quantum particles they are researching. According to quantum physics, quantum particles are not always particles at all. Until they are observed, they actually behave much more like fields. This means that until you observe a quantum particle, you can only make as close as an educated guess about where the particle might be, its energy state, and other characteristics about the particle. Now, science claims that to observe is to measure, but I have another way of describing what it means to observe that may uncover the real secrets behind what CERN is doing. In order to understand what it means to observe, I'm going to have you do it first. When looking at this image, what are the first thoughts that come to your mind? I really want you to pay close attention to these thoughts, almost as if they are not your own. What you just did was a unique occurrence for your mind. Normally you do not have this level of awareness behind your thoughts. This is because you identify yourself with them. What you were tapping into was the infinite awareness behind your mind. This is the energy at rest within the universal hologram, and it is also where your free will comes from. The reason why you can perceive of this infinite awareness is because your mind is also a hologram. A hologram unveiled by this infinite awareness that powers the entire universal hologram. The holographic theory of the brain was not invented by me. A scientist by the name of Carl Prebrum was studying the brains of monkeys while they performed specific tasks in order to figure out how the brain actually works. Most experts at the time expected the brain to perform in a binary sort of way, kind of similar to how a computer operates. However, what Prebrum discovered while working with these monkeys was puzzling. Their neurons seemed to fire in almost random patterns. This confused Prebrum until one day he figured it out. Our brain is a very complex structure that consists of neurons that branch out. These neurons produce electromagnetic fields that interfere with each other to produce interference patterns that are responsible for creating our cognition, experience, and perception. Our brain, just like quantum particles, consists of holographic fields of information that are then decoded and experienced by infinite awareness. Our brain is a hologram within a hologram that utilizes the same infinite awareness to exist. To understand this is to begin to understand the nature of free will and how CERN could be influencing our reality. Free will can be described as a process of self-reflection followed by a change in behavior. But what does it actually mean to self-reflect? Well, if you did the four-leaf clover experiment properly, you probably already self-reflected in this video. To self-reflect is to tap into the infinite awareness behind our thoughts. In the four-leaf clover experiment, you were connecting to something deeper than just the content of your mind. This is what allows us to control our minds with intention. It is what CERN uses to tamper with our reality. But instead of utilizing free will, CERN is isolating infinite awareness. There's a particular statue that has been plastered in the front of CERN that holds symbolic meaning. It's the Hindu god of Shiva. To most, this statue was just a donation from the Indian government. However, others recognize that the Hindu god Shiva is the god of destruction and that this statue was not just put here without any intention. 
This leaves us with another question. What is it that CERN is actually destroying? Well, as hinted earlier in the video regarding the Higgs boson particle, CERN is destroying reality itself. This is what isolates the infinite awareness behind everything so that it can self-reflect and cause change. For a brief moment of time, reality ceases to exist before it is near instantaneously reconstructed by this same energy at rest that we've been referring to as infinite awareness. This could be responsible for phenomenon such as the Mandela effect, as it would make sense how an event like this could cause changes in timelines and resulting discrepancies in memory. This leaves me with a couple of final questions. Is CERN able to control this process with intention? And if so, how? I will be attempting to answer these questions with something we are already vaguely familiar with, human psychology. As you guys probably know, if you've seen some of my other videos, I am a lucid dreamer. It is also lucid dreaming that has brought me down many rabbit holes of information that has gotten me to conclude that we can conceptualize the holographic universe as being akin to a sort of collective dream. This dream is different however, because there are other beings who are also sentient besides just you. The sentience stems from the same infinite awareness that powers the holographic universe. In a normal dream, you can achieve lucidity by an increase in self-awareness. This is a prerequisite for being able to control your dream as it allows your dream to become much more malleable. When your dream becomes more malleable, it becomes much more responsive to your thoughts. Could it be that the real purpose of CERN is to make infinite awareness aware of itself for such a period of time that it accelerates the speed at which sentient beings alter and change reality based on their own perceptions and experience? It's important to note that public perception is in large part controlled through the consolidated ownership of media, so it would actually benefit those in positions of power to accelerate the rate at which public perception influences reality in this theoretical application of CERN. I'd like to also make it clear, this is purely just speculation on my part, especially going into the whole lucid dreaming theory of things. But I am interested in hearing what your guys' theories and opinions are in the comments below. I hope you guys enjoyed the video, and at the very least, I hope that you found a new interesting perspective or lens to look at reality through, and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.